What a great episode this was. I think that this season is better than season one so far. I'm really excited to talk about this episode, so let's get right to it. What up to all my thugs, nerds, geeks, and freaks? You're now rocking with the best, the Don Tony Teflon, and this one is This Godfather of Harlem, season two, episode two. What an episode. As always, please subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. And if this video does hit 500 likes, I will give away one month free of any service you want, streaming service, you choose to a subscriber who leaves a comment on this video. So when the episode starts off, we see Zambrano and his minions blowing up Bumpy's number spot. Seems that they've been going through a bunch of Bumpy stuff. Bumpy at this time is trying to set up a distribution network that will push all the Italians out of the distribution loop. Just cut them out completely. That is his master plan. So he meets with all the, let's call them black mafia people, just for lack of a better term, to propose his plan. But they do not want to actually do that at this time. They're down just to keep the dope that they stole. But Bumpy tells him, you gotta think long term. You may have that dope right now, and you may sell it, and you may make some money right now. But in the long run, will it be better for you to have your own distribution network, or just have what you have right now? After going through it with them, they do agree. Bumpy's plan is best for business, and that is how we open this show. We then start off with Malcolm X on the phone with Cassius Clay, who we know becomes Muhammad Ali later, but at this time, his name is Cassius Clay, so it's no disrespect to him. We're just going to call him Cassius Clay just for this episode to be accurate with it. So he is on the phone with Malcolm X, and this is right before the Liston fight. Now, I love the way they used the Liston fight in this episode to basically set up everything that Bumpy has to go through. At this time, if people do not realize who Sonny Liston was, he was the most feared man in the history of boxing up until this time. Liston was truly a monster. He was more feared than George Foreman. He was even more feared than Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson would be the closest thing I could give you to let you know exactly how people thought that this man was unbeatable. There was no chinks in his armor. We see Mike Tyson go to decisions with people and everything. Listen, there was none of that. He beat up everyone and he just broke the bones of everyone he fought. He was just a, he was just a monster. So nobody truly believed when the phone call is over we see that it was bumpy who set up the phone call with him to help malcolm x get back in the good graces of the nation of islam after that they switched to zambrano hitting the heavy bag now he was a former fighter and that all ties into this fight situation that i think they did a great job doing it and he says that he puts fifty thousand dollars on listing in this fight and he tries to get the family at this time to flip on Bump, but they don't want to do it because they have their own concerns at this time, and that is a federal prosecutor coming down and trying to wipe out all of the family. After that, we see Pal, and you know Pal is in on everything, meeting with the federal prosecutor, and it's him that's trying to get the Italian mob out of Harlem. During this meeting, Mimi calls and says that she wants the deal that he promised her, but he will not do it because Bumpy is a gangster, and he thinks that, you know, it could be a conflict of interest for him. We see Bumpy playing chess with Frank, and he's the only one who can beat Frank, and Frank tells him that he cannot go into business with him. Now, this show was trying to use the chessboard as a metaphor for real life, as they are both kings, and they have pawns, and they're moving around the board, but... Frank puts Bumpy in check, but Bumpy's the one who checks made him with the black man beating the white man in chess, something that people did not think was possible because this is supposed to be an intellectual game. It shows that just like the game, Bumpy is one step ahead of all of them. Now, Malcolm at this time is trying to get Betty to go on a vacation to see the Clay fight, but she doesn't want to go because she believes, like everybody else, that Clay is going to lose. Mimi is then meeting with Elise and she is still playing the role of the big sister, not letting her daughter know that that's, that's really her daughter. And she says and makes it pretty clear that this hoax will not go on. 
forever. But Bumpy is still trying to get a front man, so he meets with Joe, and Joe tells Bumpy that he can't go into business with him, he can't be his front man, strictly because Bumpy is black. Then we switch and see Clay in the motel with Malcolm X playing with Malcolm's daughter. Elijah Muhammad then calls, Malcolm picks up the phone, he tells him straight up that you can't be seen, you can't really be hanging with, with Malcolm X, it's not a good idea for you to do it. And right after he gets off the phone with him, Clay then leaves and goes right to the gym. We see Pal again is confronted by Mimi in his office, he tells her that he has a federal investigation going on into the Italian Mafia and it would be bad for press if he had Bumpy's wife working with him. Bumpy is then confronted by the FBI man himself, Robert Morgenfeld, he puts him in the car and he tells him straight up, I will give you immunity for everything you've done in the past, plus everything you have done in the future, whatever happens to you, and you can keep your businesses, any money you make, you can keep all the money, all you gotta do is be my partner. So Bumpy was searching for a partner, trying to get the Italians to be his partner, but it's the FBI who, who offers to go into business with him if he snitches on all the Italians and tells them everything that he knows. Again, we hear for the second time, Benny's name brought up. And I'm going to tell you straight up right now, Benny's coming back before this season is over. Benny will be back. That's why they keep bringing this man's name up. So when Bumpy met with Joe, what we did see is that Joe doesn't keep any secrets from his wife. And we see Bumpy doing the exact same thing basically with Mimi when he is in the house with her. And she tells him, listen, you need to go and be partners with the chin. Once he is gets done with his anger, he's going to see that this is the best possible thing to do and that he needs to think more like a diplomat. They then switch again to Malcolm X, he's in the gym and Angelo Dundee is there. I personally met Angelo Dundee on many occasions. He was a really good guy, truly was a good guy, but Malcolm does meet with Angelo Dundee and Dundee does not want Malcolm around Clay because it's bad for business. He has advertising deals he wants to get him. He wants to set him up for the rest of his life and he thinks that his involvement with the Nation of Islam there's going to be no advertisers who are going to want to work with him if he stays around. So he tries to push him out. Pal then again meets with Robert and Robert wants to put the screws to Bumpy for his connection with the families and the fact that he won't work with him because he sees that Bumpy has communication with all the mafia leaders that he can get right to him and they've had agents in there they can't get nowhere near those guys but bumpy can get right to him so he truly wants bumpy to work for him so how he's going to do it is he's going to try to force bumpy's hand exactly what bumpy did to the french guy in the first episode of the season then we see bumpy meets with the chin and tells him his plan the FBI busts in, they take Bumpy into custody, they search Chin's place. Later we find out that it was all just a setup, all just a hoax. Bumpy put the whole thing together just to scare the Chin to get him to do what he wants to do. Malcolm at this time won't leave the hotel because he's sitting by the phone waiting for Clay to call. But Betty confronts him and says that she's taking the girls back home and would he be interested in clay the way he is if he loses this fight then we see stella meeting with teddy's mother she begs for forgiveness and teddy's mother's like listen if someone loves my son as much as you seem to have loved my son there's no way i could stay mad at you no way you should be my enemy and they make up pal then shows up at bumpy's house talks to mimi offers her the position she accepts the position and then they sit down to watch the fight. Back then, boxing was such a huge sport. This is exact. It was like the Super Bowl boxing back then. It was such a huge fight. There was no like really big pay-per-view things there were, but a lot of these fights you could see on network TV back then. So it was just a gathering of people, especially in the black community. We all watch boxing. We then switch to Clay getting his hands wrapped in the locker room. Malcolm enters the locker room and Clay tells him that it was Elijah Muhammad on the phone that he didn't want him to talk to him. And Malcolm then confesses back to him saying that, hey, my intentions were bad. I was kind of using you to get back in the good graces of the nation of Islam. But Clay forgives him for it and they sit down, not really sit down, they stand there and they pray right before the fight takes place. He then meets with the chin on the basketball court 
and tries to get him to start a deal and then the liston clay fight starts and then bumpy starts fighting the chin and at this time we see the chin who was a former boxer we've seen him hitting the heavy bag before he's playing the role at this particular time of sonny liston and we have forrest whitaker playing the role of cassius clay i like the way the showrunners put this together the parallel fights going on bumpy in his fight and then Cassius Clay in his fight. And they're both fighting against all odds. You know, as I said earlier, no one, no one, if you go back in the time machine, no one would have picked Clay to win this fight. No one thought he even stood a chance against him. But when you look back at it, you can see the advantages he had over Liston. He was taller than Liston. He had the length advantage, also the speed advantage. So when you look at that and his boxing IQ was just out of this world because Muhammad Ali patterned his style after Sugar Ray Robinson. And that's why he moved and stuck and moved and did all these things like that when he fought. Liston was just a regular flat-footed come forward hit you, hit you until he knocks you out, treat you like a heavy bag type of fighter. And that's what all the heavyweights were at that particular time. It was really Cassius Clay who got all these heavyweight boxers to think more, shoot the jab, come off the right hand with it. And as we see, Cassius Clay shakes up the world. He beats Sonny Liston in the biggest upset in boxing history. And then we see Bumpy beat down the chin and the chin agrees to become partners with him in the end. To me, once again, this was a solid episode. I liked it better than the first episode. I liked the introduction of Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, in this episode. Can't wait to see him going further. But we know that when that happens, it's still sad. We know it's going to happen to Malcolm, but still, it makes me sad. I truly don't want to see it. I think this actor who is playing Malcolm X is one of the best actors I've ever seen play Malcolm X and he looks like him. I think he's the closest guy that I've ever seen play Malcolm X that truly looks like Malcolm X but you tell me in the comment section what you thought about this episode please I'm very interested in knowing and if you like the way I do this please thumbs up this spread this across the realm and also subscribe please put some interaction in with this leave a comment leave a thumbs up that's the only way I can get these videos out that's the only thing that you YouTube algorithm understands and once again if this video hits 500 likes I will give away one month of any streaming service you want anyone you want I will pay for it for one month to a subscriber who leaves a comment so please get that done and until next time you know who it is peace and stay sexy